seats to the space. Um, people are requesting if the ASL interpreter could come up here. Would you be okay with that? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, wow. <laughs> A little bit of housekeeping. Um, as we, as you can see, we do have an ASL interpreter here, two of them very amazing folks who've come to help us out. Um, if you do need a better sight line of that, we invite you to come here to the front. Um, there's a couple of chairs, and um, if you could give space for those folks to be able to see, that would be great. Thank you so much. Um, so, yeah, just going to get started with what I wrote. So. So today, we are feeling so many things. Firstly, we are grateful. We are grateful first and foremost for the generosity, kindness, and unwavering extension of welcome from the Coast Salish First Nations, whose lands we work, organize, and live on. We want to offer more than an acknowledgement because so often they are empty and tokenistic and do not do justice to the ongoing decolonizing work that our indigenous friends and family are doing on a daily basis. Nor does it acknowledge the challenges that indigenous communities, especially here in the urban center of BC, face on a daily basis. Black Lives Matter started as a retaliation to police brutality and state-based racialized violence. Indigenous communities of Turtle Island know these all too well. While we remember black bodies mercilessly taken from us by police brutality, we must also remember the violence that indigenous communities face from the same forces, especially the missing and murdered indigenous women, which Audrey has already spoken about, some of, some of whom were taken on the very streets that we stand on today. We'll be donating $100 to the Urban Native Youth Association, and we encourage you to all do the same or similar. Today, we are feeling so many things. We are happy to see everyone here, to feel the warmth of community, of solidarity, of generosity, to look at our bank account and our inboxes and our Facebook page and watch an influx of financial, physical and emotional support from our community for the work we are doing and for our grief. We are also feeling a lot of confusion and anger and hurt and sadness and despair. Why does it take our bodies to be slain to remind people that black lives matter? Why does it take events 3,000 miles from here for people to commit to anti-blackness in this city? Why does it take the death of us for us to be valued in life? Why must we sacrifice some of our own, our friends, our brothers, our parents, and our children to have a semblance of the acceptance and love that white people have every single day? Today, we are feeling so many things. In 2015, 346 black people were murdered by police in the US. So far in 2016, there have been 187. It's only July. That's halfway through the year. And why should this matter to us here in blissful Canada, in this little mountain-sheltered city on the West Coast? Because let me tell you, murder is not the only way that black souls die. I have died a thousand times already. Every time you say slavery never happened in Canada, a piece of me dies. Every time you say all lives matter, a piece of me dies. Every time you ask me how I am only in relation to the deaths of my community and never because you care about me on a regular day, a piece of me dies. Every time you share a video on Facebook of someone who looks like my dad or my uncle or my brother being murdered, a piece of me dies. Every time you speak over me, tokenize me, help yourself to my hair, and my body or wear my culture as jewelry, a piece of me dies. How much of me is left now? How much will be left of me by the time I'm 30? Today, we are feeling so many things. In Dallas, several police officers were murdered by a gunman, by someone driven so angry and hateful by the destruction, the systemic erasure, and ongoing demise of our community that they were driven, driven to reproduce the same violence we are trying to combat. Black Lives Matter has committed itself to nonviolent action and has not once wavered on this. We have sat, we have marched, cried, laughed, protested, written, shouted, and gathered, and loved each other, which for some of us is the most dangerous form of resistance. 
We are sad to see that the actions of this individual have been associated with this movement and want to fervently say we do not approve of these crimes and are surprisingly appreciative of the VPD's discreet commitment to our safety. Today we are feeling so many things. The exhaustion of repeated loss and having to always organize around that. But with it, we are feeling for the first time a real sense of community and allyship from our fellow Vancouverites. And for that, we thank you all. Today, we will have a series of poems, speeches, and songs which will help us to heal, grieve, and send away the souls of our recently departed to be with our ancestors. If you take anything away from this event today, let it be this. Black folks, we see you. We love you, and we are here for you. White folks and non-black POC allies, don't let it take another death for us to see you here for us like this. Be here for us in life as you are in death. To Alton Sterling and Philando Castile, to every mother who no longer has a baby, to every child whose father has been lost to murder or the prison industrial complex, to every black woman, black queer, to every black trans person who's died silently somewhere, today we cry for you, and every other day of our lives, we will fight for you. Thank you.